Welcome to The Leather Journey, and tonight we're going to continue our uh, playlist or series on leather, articles of leather, and tonight we're going to talk about the vest. The vest is probably the most common piece of leather or leather wear that you're going to see worn, uh, not only in the leather lifestyle or BDSM, but, uh, but in dungeons around. And I have, I'll share my own opinions on vests. Uh, vests are very personal items of leather and there's different approaches and opinions, but I will talk a, a little bit about construction, a little bit about the traditions that I bumped into and the way that I set my vest up, which is just, it's a personal thing. Uh, it may follow in line with some other people's traditions and it may not, but it's, it's my path. Everybody's path's a little bit unique. My very first vest came from Wilson Leather and, um, it was, a, a circumstance. I'd been in the lifestyle about a year. I was outed at a job, uh, kind of put in a a dead end desk job. And um, so I, I relocated to upstate New York. So when I entered the lifestyle and had been there about a year, I didn't have enough time in the leather community to earn leathers. I moved to upstate New York um, following employment and there really wasn't a leather organization in upstate New York. There were some BDSM groups and, uh, you know, it was a local couple of local munches and there were play parties, but there wasn't leather like the leather I'd been exposed to uh, in my first year in the lifestyle in Hampton Roads. So I get about a year and a half of the lifestyle and I've been to a couple of events. And when you go to events, you typically, uh, events have run pins and I'll hold my vest up and you can see some of mine. My run pins I put on the left side of my vest, closest to my heart. Uh, and on the right side of my vest, I put affiliations. So the very first affiliation that I had on my leather journey was with with Black Rose and I belonged to Black Rose and in those days Black Rose uh, gave members a patch and so that was my first patch and it originally was up at the top of my vest but as I my affiliations grew I keep my affiliations that are more current at the very top so House Mermaid uh, is at the very top my next affiliation is uh, is with the House of Graves and Feel Me Breathe. Uh, I kind of consider my home dungeon the woodshed now that I retired to Florida, so I have a woodshed pen. So right side, are, I keep reserved for friends, family, and affiliations. Uh, and some of those affiliations are kind of broad. I mean, I have a disabled American veteran pin. I, I, everyone that sees me dance with a whip knows that I love to dance. So I actually have a ballroom dance pin down on the lower side of that vest. Um, and ballroom dancing, <laughs> we're getting a little off topic, but ballroom dancing is probably one of the few vanilla activities that actually involves dominance and submission for, for three minutes on the dance floor. I lead in whichever lady or partner I'm dancing with follows and there's kind of rules and protocols that you use in ballroom just like in the leather lifestyle. So uh, right side is affiliations, left side is run pins. Uh, I have a name patch just so I remember who I am and uh, and people that meet me when I'm wearing my vest will instantly know who I am. So I'm going to flip it over and let you see the back side. Most of the patches that you come across in the lifestyle are what I would call an embroidered patch uh, and they're made out of fabric or cloth. 
the patch that's on the back of my vest is actually a leather patch and leather patches are kind of uh, unusual I you do see a few but even but most of the patches that are the large back patches are still made out of uh, embroidered I was at South Plain or no it wasn't South Plains it was Thunder in the Mountains that uh, that I found this particular leather vendor was uh, very good at doing patches and um, House Mermaid had a pendant that was two mermaids back to back that were kissing and their tails were together. So it, it's a little bit abstract when it's up close. This particular leather crafter came from a stage and uh, fine arts background and uh, the unique thing about a patch that's done abstract like this is as someone's walking away, the farther away, uh, the more distinct and more easily recognized the design is. So it, it, it's a leather patch on a leather vest, and it's a little bit, I think it's unique. Um, so this vest was not presented to me. I was in a position where uh, I had to take leadership, uh, I formed a leather house, and had 17 extended family members. In a future video, we'll talk some about House Mermaid and what it was and how we put it together. Uh, but my feelings on vests are uh, it's great if they're earned and if they're presented. Uh, if you're in a family or a pack or a tribe or an organization in the leather community that's in a position to present leather, I encourage that organization to do that at about the one year point. If someone's come in and they've demonstrated uh, kind of the foundational principles of leather, uh, honor, integrity, trust, respect, loyalty, uh, and they've contributed and been active, then somewhere around that first year point, and I know it was for me, uh, I was looking to go to my first leather event at Black Rose, and when you go to a leather event, you typically walk away with a run pin. And if you have a run pin, you need some place to put it. And the best place to put it's on a leather vest. So I like to use that one year kind of feeling out period at the end of the first year, uh, somewhere around the end of the first year, if you're in a leather organization that's presenting leather, uh, I think the vest should be presented. So it encourages the person, uh, it's given with a leather heart and encourages the person that's interested in leather to continue on their journey and it, it's a milestone for them. Uh, so my, my left side kind of tells a story. Um, I, I love teaching workshops and I love going to leather events and I've been to, I have no idea how many leather events I've been to. Uh, I have lost one pin. One of my Thunder in the Mountains pins came off. One of the downsides of collecting run pins is they're all designed a little different. And the ones with the simple frogs on the back, it's very easy for a frog to come off and for you to lose a pin. So you do have to be careful with them. Um, as far as construction, uh, a lot of the leather that you get in a biker shop or in Wilson's Leather comes from Pakistan. Uh, if it comes from Pakistan or Mexico, it should be labeled as such. Uh, a lot of that, a lot of those vests will be lined with satin. I actually like the feel of the leather against my skin. It's kind of like a second skin. So I prefer my vest, or my vest is unlined and I actually prefer it that way. That's the way my pants are made as well. They're unlined so that I can feel the leather uh, against my skin. And I think of it almost as a second skin uh, when I'm wearing it. So um, 
it's uh, it it's something that I cherish. I I'll, I'll wear it a lot when I'm at an event. When I go in the dungeon, I tend to take it off when I'm playing because I throw a whip and I with so many pins and attachments on the vest, it seems like the whip or the tails get caught up in the pins and uh, it's just safer for the presentation if I take it off. Then if I do sweat out during the scene, I'm not sweating out in my vest, I can actually change my shirt and put my vest on and that actually keeps me warm uh, it keeps me from, from losing too much body heat. So leather does provide uh, warmth. Uh, it provides a sense of, oh, it almost feels like I'm being hugged by some somebody that I love uh, when I'm wearing it. So that gets a little more maybe into the emotional side of, of wearing a vest. Uh, now, construction. There are some interesting things that can be done that I've seen done with, with the vest. This vest, of course, was measured and made to fit me, but one of the things you can look for is the side panel of a vest. Uh, a lot of times the leather worker will leave that open and we'll put uh, put rivets in and lacing, and it'll be laced on either on both sides. And if there's lacing there, then that allows you to adjust it. So as you get, if you fluctuate in your weight, you gain five pounds, gain ten pounds, lose some weight, you can take your vest in or let your vest out, and. Um, It'll literally last you a lifetime. So uh, take care of your leather. Uh, a couple times a year I condition it. Uh, I wear it a lot. If you, uh, just your hand oil is gonna put some conditioning back into the leather. But the leather does need uh, conditioning. So it it's uh, kind of a pain in the pin feathers to take all the pins off and condition it but it needs to be done. Uh, underneath the patches, there's really no way to condition that. Now, I will say one thing on the affiliation patches. Uh, at, at least in the tradition I had been taught, your most current affiliation would be at the top and then older ones kind of go down. Uh, I've got an honorarium affiliation with House of Graves. Uh, but once you've put a patch on and it puts holes in your vest, if I pull a, a larger patch off and move it, and then I put a smaller patch in the area that the larger patch was in, the vest isn't going to look that great. So uh, sometimes there's a consideration just for appearance and, and the way that you want your vest to to present itself. And in those instances, you might consider if you have to move a larger patch, you kind of want a patch about the same size to go in on that spot, uh, if it's possible. We were talking about missing frogs. I'm missing a frog right there. If I don't find a frog, I'm gonna lose that pen. That's the House of Graves pen. So I have a frog in in my bedroom, so let me go get that. That's kind of it for vest. Uh, please share your thoughts. Um, vests that are designed specifically for females, sometimes they'll be designed a little more halter style uh, with a little bit of an open back. There are, there are just different designs. This is a pretty traditional uh, design with uh, with four snaps on the front, I typically don't snap it. Uh, I leave it open. And I, my preference is to wear a t-shirt under it, but uh, it all depends on the setting. So uh, I hope 
that was an instructive and helpful. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit uh, in the future about the mirror, the mirror cover, uh, and then that's going to kind of wrap it up for the leather playlist. We're going to move then over into uh, talking about more about community and uh, principles of of leather and the way we conduct ourselves within the community and within a dungeon and hopefully the way that we care and love for each other. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much for watching.